Hello everyone, my name is Hashem and thanks for joining me today or tonight if you're here in Melbourne. If you're new to these live streams, this one is a contact sheets live stream where I go over a roll of film or a contact sheet, pile of photos really of uh, generally street photography. I've only done a few of them so far, but we go over some shots on a contact sheet and then pick out a few of the favorites from that, that roll of film or maybe a bunch of photos in the future if I do digital contact sheets, who knows and then sort of critique them, go over some of those photographs, uh, try and get you guys out there into the mindset of shooting on the street, what went into making those photos. And in the past, it's been only, uh, I think two or three streams of this type, but I've gone over my own photos, one or two of my own rolls of film. However, I'd always wanted to do a similar thing for someone else's photos. And that's what we're doing today. We're going over a roll of film, from a, a friend of mine, Damon, who I've met through the channel, who is a fellow um, fellow Melbourne film photographer who shoots a fair bit of street. And I saw a roll of film that he posted recently, a series of shots. And I thought, those look good, man. Do you want to submit that for uh, one of these little live stream critiques? And he said, yeah, for sure. So let's just make sure everything's working all right. Looks good on my end. So let me know if everything's sounding and looking all right on your end. And thanks again for joining, guys. I'm really psyched to be back doing this as you might know if you watch the channel i've been going through a bit of a move recently moving uh you know locations for this space so it looks a bit different still trying to organize everything i've had a lot of trouble trying to get internet and everything kind of working correctly but we've got enough of a connection tonight to hopefully get this going so it looks like my audio might be a bit loud might be clipping but yeah hopefully that's good and I've got Jonathan in the chat. Hey man, thanks. Looking and sounding good. All right, good to know. So yeah, I'm excited to be back. I'm really, I kind of realized how much I actually started to enjoy doing these little live streams and especially this one, the contact sheets. I really enjoy doing this because I think even more so for this because I like the idea of getting into someone else's mindset on the street, not just looking at my own photos. So let's give you an idea of what we're looking at today without further ado. I'm gonna be uh, going through all these on Lightroom, so excuse the interface, but uh, what Damon's done is he's given me his contact sheet for this entire roll of film that he shot. Let me just move some windows around here, sorry. Get this out of my way. Cool. And uh, this is a roll, I believe, of Kodak Portrait 800 that he shot at 400. Dr. Shiv, hey, hello. Sorry, guys, I need to look over this way on my other monitor where the, the chat is, but greetings from Spain. Hey, thanks. Thanks for joining. But yeah, I think Damon mentioned that he shot Portrait 800 at 400 on this roll. So a bit of overexposure, very common with Portrait 800. You get nicer colors, generally speaking. Uh, yeah, and it's shot on the Leica M4. And uh, if you're into street photography, this might be an interesting little critique to go through. So if you're from Melbourne, you'll recognize this spot. This is a Flinders Street station. This is the biggest train station in Melbourne's CBD area. Uh, it's the most historic, well-known station and even landmark where a lot of people meet up. So it's a hustling, bustling part of the city. Just to set that context for you, if you're not familiar with Melbourne. So if we go into this contact sheet, let's zoom in a bit here, go to fill view. Um, what you can see is that most of the photographs uh, Damon's taken look to be from the same area. Now, what I'm excited about is that I didn't really take a good look at any of these photos or contact sheet beforehand. I only saw a few that uh, Damon posted on Instagram. And if you're interested in checking out his work, I put his uh, des description, sorry, his Instagram in the description. You can check that out. But have a look at these. You can kind of see that he's been working this scene around Flinders Street Station. And it might be even more interesting, I guess, if you're from Melbourne, um, that you might recognize some of this these landmarks, these spots around Flinders Street. And it's something I've talked about a fair bit in my previous live streams about the whole idea of really working a scene, sticking around, seeing what you can do and developing your eye in that sense. And the first thing I'm noticing is that the weather's good, which is always nice. There's a lot of activity, which is the primary thing I look for when I'm on the street. And he's got a lot of interesting characters, light and subjects to work with uh what it looks like and i don't know if damon's actually going to be jumping on live but it looks like he's shooting with a slightly wider lens so it looks like maybe just a 35 mil focal length if i was guessing all right so he's getting up pretty close 
and just looking through this contact sheet, getting some closer shots and trying to work a bit wider. And what's cool is if you can see the film strip down here is I asked Damon to also pick out all his favorite shots from the role and uh, give me the full scans of those as well. So we can look at those and sort of analyze them as well. And what you can see here is he's kind of looks like he's been working this scene, looking out for interesting characters, colors, and combinations of things, and um, even some interactions like with this guy here. So that's the first shot. That's the select. So that's the first select that we're going to look at. Um, but before that, let's just sort of get an overview of the, con the contact sheet. And you can see here he's taken two subsequent shots because there's a bit of an action or a gesture happening. And you can tell from the police car in the background, this would only be a second apart. Probably would have just taken the first shot. Someone's being handed a, a brochure, obviously. I know how this works on this Flinders Street. There's a lot of people handing out pamphlets and stuff like that. And uh, he would have just advanced the film and taken another shot immediately afterwards there. And what I like is that it looks like he stepped in further because with this first shot, uh, you can see just by that bike <clears throat> and with this here is he was probably rushing in to try and get closer to this scene. And to me, the second shot definitely works a lot better than the first one. And you can kind of see that persistence of not just giving up on the first shot. Again, it's wider. You got more of that phone pole here and that bike, but he's walking forward, obviously while advancing the film, taking the second shot. Um, whether or not it's one of his final selects, it's just a good work ethic to, to have, I think, to kind of really uh, not always give up on one shot. Okay, and again here, um, this might be a discrepancy in the scan. Obviously, they look very different, but it looks like he's tried to take two different takes um, on this. Sorry, that was really confusing. Tried to have two different takes on this scene here with the guy <clears throat> who looks to just be waiting around the front of the station. Um, two different gestures very similar composition or maybe he um underexposed and fixed his exposure i think in the second one um but yeah i'm already quite a fan of this role it gets me excited about imagining i was there on this day and shooting actually let's zoom a bit out because i'm missing some shots so this shot here this is a this is a great one this guy's glasses are just killer and i can see why he took this because this guy just really stands out as a character <clears throat> and i also like how his um his colors work with the background, but we'll get more into that. Um, I think this shot here was a select. Yep, I can see that down there. The woman, the gesture is always a good thing to look for. And he's also included a few other characters there. Um, but it looks like a lot of this happened within seconds of each other. So she's still gazing up at the sun or something up there. And he's gone off and clicked another shot immediately after there, which is really cool because sometimes there might be a minor difference between the two but one works better than the other. In this case, let me know what you guys think. I know it's a little bit tricky and I'll try and work on the format of this and maybe in the future get all the shots. Um, but I think I like this second one because of this businessman. He's a bit more interesting and his facial expression kind of mirrors what she's doing off in the other direction, looking off sort of puzzled. So I really like that. I kind of like those little gestures and stuff um, in a scene like that. Hey, thanks for joining, Josh. Yeah, so looks like a nice day of shooting. And this just sort of gives you an idea of um, how quickly you can blast off a roll of film if you really have an interesting set of subjects to work with on the street. Sometimes you can come out to Flinders and it's just dead or it's just boring or there's not really um, much. And I know that's very subjective, but um, yeah, you can easily go through a roll of film when you have a lot to work with. And it's about sort of getting into the energy of the crowd and working with it. This one's pretty interesting here too with the lady in the middle of um, taking a drag. Um, you can see he just sort of keeps working all these different angles, watching out for characters. Uh, the difficult thing about shooting a wider lens, and I'm not sure if you were shooting 28 or 35, looks like 35, is that as soon as you go that wide, it's a bit tricky to not only get your verticals straight as with this shot here, whether or not that's something you try and do, but also to try and include what you want and, and uh, exclude things that you don't necessarily want in the scene. It becomes harder that the, the wider the lens in um, lens is, it's going to suck in all those um, subjects in the background. So you can see with this shot here, there's a lot of things in the background that you may not necessarily want. 
Um, so that's one thing when it comes to shooting wide. However, this is where shooting wide really shines. You can see this shot here is my favorite on the roll for sure. And I think it was probably Damon's favorite on the roll is where he's really up close to this character at probably minimal focal distance. This is probably at like 0 0.7 meters, I would guess, or, or less. Um, but anyway, let's just take a quick overview of what's remaining. Um, yeah, just sort of watching out for characters and actions and gesture. Um, so I think he and I shoot pretty similarly in that sense in terms of what we look for. Hey, Garth, I'm here for a live stream. Nice, man. You made it all the way from over in the UK. By the way, Garth is um, talking about selling his Leica, which um, he has good reason for, but I'm kind of upset that he's selling it. Uh, this is interesting. It's a you know a photo of a, ta a lady taking a photo off Linda Street Station because it's quite an interesting landmark, especially for tourists. You kind of see stuff like this, and um, <clears throat> just makes a nice little extra addition to the otherwise you know simple scene of Flinders Street Station, especially because of the color she's wearing. It really pops against that background. I'm sure with this one he went for the interesting outfit. Cool. Yeah, I like this one here too. The guy's in the middle of writing a note, leaning on the edge of the wall there. And I'm not sure if this is the same guy. Probably not actually, but there's another scene where a guy's reading a newspaper, which these days is something, you know, cool and interesting to see, but really not sure if it's the same guy because he's gone from that to this guy, if it is someone else, back to the, the first one here, writing notes. So yeah, it looks like it was a great day to shoot. I'm pretty jealous. Let's look a bit deeper into some of these shots. <laughs> hey, Matt. Nice. Middle of the day and in between Monaco F1. Oh, nice. There will be videos on the M6 before it goes. Looks like you've decided to definitely sell it then. All right, so the first select um, Damon's chosen here. This is what I like about this shot is obviously the interaction. Okay, so for me, it's all about that interaction between the subject and the camera. The guy's looking straight into the lens. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I think um, my throat's a bit dry. But that always makes a shot a little bit more interesting when it's an otherwise ordinary scene. If it's just someone walking past, looking away or on their phone, it's not going to work as well. And on its own... I'm not sure if this is enough to drive this particular shot to make it as strong as some of the other ones he's got on the roll, for example, or if there was something else sort of happening in this part of the scene, or if that, you know, all these guys on the left-hand side of the background uh, were complimenting him in some slightly more interesting way. I do like how there looks to be a, a police or uh, one of those transit guard officers sort of looking over at the camera as well but he's too far in the background to really add too much. And this lady here walking past with the phone doesn't really add much to that central figure. I think personally she distracts a little bit. So I like this shot, but I don't think it's as good as some of the other ones on there, but I definitely like that interaction. And I think he's like holding a, a cigarette in his hand, which is cool. Looks like maybe Damon might've noticed that. And I know that, you know, obviously someone taking a drag of a cigarette is always an interesting shot as well. Um, if they happen to be doing it in a candid way. The second shot he's chosen. This one's pretty good. I love that these two look like puzzled tourists in an area where you often will see puzzled tourists. And uh, the first thing that grabs me is obviously her outfit. My eye gets drawn to the red coat, the uh, scarf, the look on both of their faces. It's great. And not only is this scene good because you've got that central attraction so to speak same as you had with this guy but i feel like in this one everything else going on behind them actually does work to somewhat set the scene to complement it a bit more and it's a little bit more balanced because if you look at this one it's very heavy weighted on the left which might not be so bad but again this is a pretty you know um subjective thing that we're looking at is street photography but in this one i feel like everything's a little bit more balanced and spread out and you've got these pairings. You've got these central two. You've got another pairing here. I'm not sure if they were even together. Um, but it makes me wonder about these things. It makes me more interested. And you've got like a slightly better balance of characters there. And also the clocks in the background 
give a sense of all this sort of nicely spread alignment. So, oh, hey, Damon, you made it on. Nice, man. So Damon's in the chat. This was a bit more snapshotty. I wish I had him from center frame. Yeah, this is sort of a snapshot, but this is what um, I think can work well when you have a nice wide scene with a, a wide lens. And I don't know, Damon, actually, um, was it a 35 mil lens that you were shooting with? That's something I was assuming based on just the focal length. It looks like it's around 35 mil that you were shooting. Because I know you got a 50 recently, but it does not look like 50. Uh, yeah, so this is one of those field photographs, kind of like like Joel Meyerowitz style of photo where it's not necessarily right up close, but it's what it is including is pretty well balanced and you've got a good distribution of elements sort of setting a wider scene. And I really like that. Um, so 35 F2. Yeah, cool. So it's a 35 F2 lens, um, which incidentally is the same lens Meyerowitz uses a lot. Now this one... <laughs> Obviously, what he's gone for is this guy's fantastic style and appearance. <laughs> what I've just noticed is you can actually see Damon's reflection in this guy's glasses. I didn't notice that in the thumbnail, but that's that's hilarious. So it's a good shot, but obviously there is a little bit lacking, I think, in composition. It looks like he had to react. Maybe I'm guessing he was pretending to be taking a photo of the background scene of people crossing. So when, because I know I would probably do something similar. And what happens then is that your composition suffers a little bit because what I would have liked if, if the camera was pointing down a little bit more. If the camera was pointing down, even a couple of inches more, it becomes more obvious to the subject that I'm pointing right at you. So yeah, all right, so that was the story. Um, but not only that, but there is a little bit of motion blur. I'm guessing he probably zone focused here, went for that snapshot, probably saw this guy coming and set himself up for a certain zone, maybe one meter, but it looks like it was a little bit front focused, but still it works as part of a series. Um, but it's a great attempt and I'd still be pretty happy with this as opposed to not getting the shot at all because yeah, there's just something about this guy's style, kind of Blues Brothers, the look on his face. Um, but yeah, otherwise everything else didn't quite come together as, as well as it could have, but this is great practice. You can see me in that reflection. Yeah, that was a good one. So the next shot, this one I love. This is really good. And it's actually interesting that he chose the one that had this guy in the background as well. Um, with this one, again, it's sort of that field photograph because even though he could have gotten closer and removed a few more of these background elements, I like their inclusion because again, it's more balanced. So if we compare it to this shot, for example, um, oh, that's not really cooperating. All right, let's go back to single photo view. I just, yeah, this shot, again, the balance of people in the background doesn't work as well, for example, as this one, because you've got that central character with that great gesture, the great outfit. She's just interesting. The light's hitting her really nicely. Um, and she's right there smack bang in the middle of the frame, but then everything happening around her doesn't distract too much. It sort of adds to the scene. It sets the scene, gives you an idea of what it would have been like to be there. There's a guy handing out brochures in the background. There's businessmen, there's everyday people, there's a tram. So it, it works pretty well. Again, I would have liked if the camera was tilted down a little bit. This could be that kind of subconscious uh, fear of being noticed because I'm only going off what I experience. So when I sometimes come back with photos and I'm working this close to a scene, because mind you, he would have only been, let's say 1.5 meters from this lady. Uh, you have that subconscious fear and you're not really pointing your camera in a way that you would have if it didn't matter whether or not you were getting noticed. Um, but even then, let, I don't know what you guys think. Maybe the negative space works well. I often have my rule of third sort of playing into these things where I don't put faces right in the middle of a scene. She's sort of smack bang in the middle. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think. I really like this shot. I'm just checking the chat, what Damon's saying. I positioned myself in front of him. Oh, this is the previous one. He kept moving around a lot, so I couldn't set it up the way I really wanted. All right, this is the glasses guy. Yeah. <laughs> Glad I just got those amazing sunglasses. Yeah, they're great. 
Murphy's film. I like this one. Yeah, so this is a nice shot. Just beautiful light. The, the Dengadev space really does work. I'm just wondering how much of it um, would have been changed by a different composition. Because obviously, if you, for example, you could have squatted down and you would have had more of her background being blue sky. If you had kneeled down and shot upwards, that could have been another way of approaching this. If you had sort of gone higher and shot down, that probably wouldn't have worked because then she would have been against the background of that tram. She would have sort of been uh, blending into the distraction of the tram a bit more. But it's good how her face is against the blue sky. So, yeah, let me know in the comments, guys, if you're watching this later on, uh, you know, what your favorite shots were on this roll, what you think could work better about any certain shot. Because the whole thing I want to try and get out of this is um, just to get us thinking, how would we approach a scene? How could you re-approach a scene if you were given a second chance? And uh, that's what I'm interested in, I guess, when, when I'm doing these sort of critiques. It's not so much criticizing, but just more trying to give some feedback on different ways of approaching a scene. All right, so second last shot. <laughs> All right, this is great. I didn't actually notice this guy's uh, floral outfit from the thumbnail. But this is, again, why were there so many awesome outfits this day? Was it some special event or something? Or was it just lucky? Um, yeah, so this is, this is really nice because, again, I think I can see Damon's composition tends to put a subject right in the middle. And in this situation, I really like it because he's... <laughs> So the flowers, I don't know if you guys noticed the flowers in the background. There's always this flower shop at Flinders Street. It's pretty much permanent. It's been there for the years I've lived in Melbourne. And he just happens to be wearing a floral suit underneath what looks like a houndstooth jacket. Um, and he's looking right at the camera. So you've got that interaction. You've got somewhat of a gesture in the interesting way he's walking, holding his bag. You've got the cool outfit. You've got the juxtaposition of the flowers against... Uh, you know, the floral, it looks like a floral pattern on his suit. And nothing is too distracting. If there was some character, you know, here or sitting on the steps, depending who they were, may or may not have worked well for the scene. But in this one, it's a pretty clean shot. Um, interesting element, good light. Again, my, my personal instinct goes to wanting to point the camera down a little bit. I want to see a little bit more of the pants because it looks like whatever was going on with the pants was interesting too. And what is included here wasn't probably as necessary. You've got that video surveillance sign. So if the camera was tilted down a little bit, just to kind of where that gray line is, include a little bit more of his legs and pants and outfit, put his face in the thirds, the top thirds of the image. That's personally how I would have composed it. But again, this is really depending how you shoot. So again, let me know what you guys think about this one, how you'd approach this scene. And uh, would you get closer? Would you move further back? Stuff like that. But our, the exposure spot on um, because of the expose, uh, having exposed for the the light, so for the sunlight. So if he was using Sunny 16, I know Damon's shooting on the M4. Um, this would be a manual intentional metering decision because it's left the background in shadow, meaning it's not as distracting to the foreground. Dr. Shiv, certainly a striking outfit hidden under a subdued blazer. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? This, the blazer isn't that subdued after all, but just in comparison to the rest of his outfit, it is. So yeah, this is probably my second favorite shot after this final shot on the roll, which is just... <laughs> I don't know if I've ever taken a shot this close. So this is pretty cool because as someone who lives in Melbourne, you've gotten a really nice... like angular shot of Flinders Street Station and the famous clock that everyone, you know, meets under the Flinders Street clock or the clocks, the other ones I showed you earlier that are here. Um, but they're sort of iconic, the whole Flinders Street and the clock stuff. Uh, but what I'm guessing from this shot is that this was shot not from eye level. So this was probably shot from the waist. Just to grab my camera. Because um, I can sort of tell from the, the point of view is that if you were shooting unless this guy is massively tall, um, this was sort of taken this this way, kind of sneaky, or like that, just kind of, whoops, camera slipped. So, 
Is that true? I've been shooting portrait 800, 400, and metering for the highlights on the skin. Yep. Absolutely. A pre-focus shot from the waist. Yeah. So, but in, I often don't do that because I have tried it. I have sometimes shot from the waist, but it doesn't always, hardly ever turns out. This time it obviously did. And if it meant either shooting from the waist or not taking the shot, I'm glad he took the shot. And it also created for a very interesting point of view. You don't often see a perspective shooting up into someone's face. You can see those hard shadows falling down on his face. Um, the almost grim expression, maybe it's just the sun in his eyes and he's perfectly set against that background of Flinders Street Station. Happens to be wearing blue jacket, blue shirt. You've got the blue sky. The exposure works really well. gives you great colors. So, and what I really like is sort of that clock gives you a bit of a circle here and it is sort of uh, creating a little bit more interest and balance in the thirds of the image, even though his face is still in the middle of the shot. Um, it kind of mimics the the round face. You got that round clock and some other round shapes here and there in the arches around the windows there. And it's kind of cool that you can just see a little bit of the word Flinders Street Station there. So Morgan, good aim from the waist. Damon, I shoot from both. If I have the chance, I'll almost always compose, but if I have the chance, I'll take the risk and shoot from the waist. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the, the interesting thing about this particular shot is if you had shot it from eye level, you wouldn't have gotten that great backdrop of Flinders Street uh, set against this guy's face as well. If anything, maybe if it was again tilted a little bit more down, if you actually moved back, you're almost too close to this guy. So I'm guessing you probably set the focus at minimum like 0 0.7 um, and just sort of almost bumped into this guy and just took the shot and moved on. If anything... Maybe if you were one foot further back or just half a foot, it would have worked pretty well as well. You would have got a little bit more of his torso and more blue sky, but this this works great. So I really love it. I'm trying to place my subjects at Flinders Street in these shots. It's a big part of the project I'm working on at the moment. Yeah. And if that's what you're trying to do, this one really succeeded in that. You really placed him in the context of Flinders Street Station. The colors work well. So I'm sure this was a great fun role to shoot. And uh, yeah, we should we should go shoot um, together again sometime. Just checking some more comments. Awesome, I can never get good composition with rangefinder from the waist. Yeah, it's not it's not easy. Obviously, if you have a wider lens, it works a bit better. And you have to kind of get good at knowing what your angles are going to equate to. And even then, you can never really be sure. So generally speaking, I don't advise people to go shoot from the waist as a habit. I don't think it builds as good of a skill set in terms of composing because you're leaving too much down to chance in my opinion but again if it's if it's either that or nothing go for it uh if it's a matter of intention you're actually trying to to for example shoot from a low perspective go for it because otherwise you have to kneel down and that doesn't always work you can't necessarily kneel down swoop past someone without getting in their way as opposed to just trying to do the sneaky shoot from the waist. But yeah, again, that's something that anyone in the comments can uh, contribute their thoughts to. Absolutely, man. Flinders is a blast to shoot at. Yeah, definitely. I've had a lot of fun shooting at Flinders, but I don't think I've had as many interesting subjects in one session. So correct me if I'm wrong, um, Damon, was this just one session of shooting? And uh, how long were you actually out shooting this role? I'd be interested to know. I'm sure anyone watching would be. Cool. Well, I think that's been a good little stream. I'll just uh, have a bit more of a back and forth in the chat and I think we'll leave things there. This was a single roll, probably about an hour. Wow, okay. I'm trying to just specifically stay within a 10 by 10 meter square. Yeah, it must be pretty hard to do. I would be pretty antsy and start wandering around, especially if there's not much happening after a few minutes or sometimes 10 minutes, unless the light's just really good. But yeah, this just goes to show that there's a lot down to luck as well. You can be out for a certain day and then not have much happening and then 
same exact location, same time of day on a completely different, you know, calendar date and it's it's way better. Yeah, so let me know what you guys think of this format. I have already kind of uh, learnt a lot from doing this and how I can kind of improve this in terms of the interface, especially. I think I'll um, I'll find a better way to actually sort of show you the photos and go through them, especially with the contact sheet. What I'll try and do is maybe get the entire roll and uh, maybe see if I can find some way to annotate things on the screen. I've actually messed around with software to try and do that and it works, but it doesn't actually show up on the live stream interface for some reason. So I'm still working on ways to improve the delivery of this type of live stream. Let me know if you have any suggestions or thoughts, um, but I do enjoy looking at someone else's photos because I really like getting in their shoes and trying to put myself in that scene in that situation, talking about how I, how I would have approached it and how I think other people might approach it. And um, yeah, it's good fun. So if anyone here is interested in this contact sheets live stream format, uh, it's going to be done through Discord moving forward. Every now and then I might do some of my own photos still, but I also want to still do other people's rolls of film and go over those contact sheets and their selected images and kind of look at the shooting process. And it's really interesting if you have something where you've kind of uh, shown in your contact sheet some sequence of events from shot to shot. So if you've worked a scene, for example, or multiple scenes, and it's not as sort of erratic, that makes it quite interesting to look at. So if you're not on Discord, join the Pushing Film Discord server. There's a link in the description of this video. Uh, check out Damon's Instagram, which I'm pretty sure I put in the description. Let's just um, bring it up here, actually. Yep, so that's Damon Tidesley. Am I saying that right? Probably not. Um, on Instagram, but there's a, a link, a direct link to his Instagram page and sorry, Damon Tildesley. <laughs> sorry, man, I mispronounced your name. Uh, yeah, there's some of the shots there that he posted, but he's got some amazing work, not only street photography, but he's working on a portrait series uh, and a few different series, a zine that he's working on. I know he's told me about that. Hey, look, there's a shot of yours truly here. and just lots of interesting work all around. I really love this portrait actually. Yeah, so check out Damon's work on Instagram, any of his other links, some good stuff. And I really enjoyed going over that role. So let's get back to the other window. And I'll just, I've lost my chat, so I'll bring that back up. All right, I think that's it guys. Thanks for joining on this one. Again, give me your suggestions and uh, what you'd like to see moving forward. It was good to get enough time to jump on and do this little stream. Things have been extremely busy at the moment. Sorry for the lack of content on the channel, but there is some interesting stuff coming up. I'm actually currently shooting um, some Superior 400 in this Leica MA and I'm comparing it to a Fuji X-Pro3 which is not only just for the film comparison to the film simulation, but I'm actually looking at the X-Pro3 in general as a camera from the film shooter's perspective. For, so for someone like me who shoots on a Leica for street photography or a lot of other film cameras, I'm looking at the X-Pro3 from the perspective of a film shooter, how it feels with that hidden screen, some of those film simulations and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, uh, you know, watch out for that on the channel later down the track. Enjoy the rest of your night and thanks for joining. See you guys.